Okay, physics time. We're talking today about center of gravity and stability. This is going to be a pretty brief thing, or at least it could be. I mean, we could spend a lot of time talking about it if we wanted, but let's keep it simple. What did I just say? Center of gravity, of gravity, and stability. The center of gravity, um, which is usually synonymous with center of mass, we use those interchangeably, and we'll talk about the difference between those in one second. But the center of gravity is just the place where we can consider the force of gravity to be acting. So in reality, if this is an object, here I have an object, ball, maybe, whatever, made of atoms. In reality, every single atom that makes up this ball is pulled on by a certain minuscule force of gravity. Right? I mean, that makes sense. The atoms are mass, and we know that mass is what allows objects to interact with the gravitational field of the universe. But this is complicated, and we do not like it when things are complicated in physics. So what, hap what we do, and I'm trying to make this to be the exact same size, and I had a failure. What we do is we assume, no, that's not even true. We consider that instead of each individual atom making it up, affected by the tiny little strength of gravity that all of them added together affects this with one single force of gravity at its center of mass. And we call it center of mass because it's being interacted with the gravitational field of the universe, which is what makes it have mass. We call it center of gravity when we're talking specifically about the force acting on it. And just like when we have the, dis the discussion of the difference between mass and gravity in general, or when we have the difference between weight and mass in general, the difference here is that center of mass is where all of the inertial mass of the products can be considered to be concentrated, here in the center, and the center of gravity is where we can consider the force of gravity to be acting all concentrated, which is also here in the center. The only difference becomes for an extremely large or tall object, like if we have a skyscraper, pretend this is a skyscraper tie, okay? The center of mass might be here. Uh, let me just draw it as a dot, sorry, so it can be a little easier. The center of mass might be here, and the center of gravity might be here. Why would there be a difference? Well, the reason is that the center of mass is going to be true no matter where it is in the universe. But the center of gravity will be there slightly lower because gravity is affecting the top part of this slightly less than it's affecting the, the so there's a, a tiny bit stronger g at the bottom than at the top and because of that the center of gravity is a little bit lower than the center of mass in the same way that the mass would be the same wherever it went in the universe the center of mass would be the same wherever it went in the universe the center of gravity very slightly because the gravity itself very slightly over the, the length of this very tall building but even then, the difference, this is, this is an exaggeration of the difference. Even if this skyscraper were life size, it would be nowhere near this much. Something like I would, cons maybe, maybe a centimeter lower the center of gravity is than the center of mass in, a, in, a, in the world's tallest building, perhaps. And that's, I made up those numbers, but I would bet that's pretty close to the truth. So all center of gravity is, is where we can consider all the force to be acting on the object. And this makes it a lot easier uh, when we're talking about mass that we don't have to worry about the individual pieces that make them up. When an object is hurled through the air, even if it's an irregular object like a, okay, here's Zeus. Zeus has that kind of nose, don't at me. And he has this kind of hair. He has, this is Isaac Newton. Um, this is Isaac Newton. This is Isaac Newton's legs. <laughs> and he's hurling a thunderbolt because he started out being Zeus. Ugh. I'm doing good, uh, through the air. And even though the thunderbolt itself will rotate crazy directions as it goes, because he's not throwing it right, because it's not, it's not Zeus, it's Newton, he doesn't know how to throw a thunderbolt. And even though the thunderbolt's gonna rotate crazy directions as it moves, the center of mass follows a perfect parabolic arch through the air. The classic example is like if I throw a monkey wrench or a baseball bat through the air, even though the thing itself wobbles and spins about its own center of mass, the center of mass itself follows the regular projectile motion path. Newton here, pictured as an elder tour. Where can we find the center of gravity? Well, it's easy for this. In a sphere, where is it? 
It's in the center of the sphere. In a cube, where is it? In the center of the cube. It becomes more complicated when we, actually this is what your lab was about, but if we have like a hammer, for instance, the center of mass is quite a bit nearer the handle, or quite a bit nearer the head than the handle. Yeah. Your lab was about finding the center of mass of different objects. One way we can do it, there's two ways we can do it. One way is by measuring, and the other way is by dangling. So if we dangle something, it will be suspended by its center of mass. It's also the geometric center for objects that are geometrically regular. <coughs> Um, interestingly, the center of gravity. Where's the center of gravity for? Uh, where's the center of gravity for my teacup? Yeah, it's inside the teacup. Is there anything in there? Well, there's tea, but is the cup itself here? No. And likewise, for a chair, where's the center of gravity for the chair? Yeah, it's 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 where there isn't anything. There there doesn't have to be matter where the center of gravity is, and that, that'll become important later when we talk about the Fosbury flop. Um, you do know about that? Is that what you said? Because you, you, you do the high jump, don't you? You do do the high jump. Did they call it the Fosbury flop? Uh, they don't call it anything. It, it's the this, this is the normal way to do it. You don't have to name it because that's how it that's how it be. Um, yeah, the the let's talk now about stability. An object will fall over if these conditions are met. This this condition is met. One, if the objects center of mass, let's say center of gravity, because gravity is affecting it here, center of gravity is outside its support base, it will topple. Here's the object. Where, God bless you. Where's its center of gravity? in the center, in the geometric center. Where's its support base? Well, it's the base that's in contact with the ground that's supporting it. It's where the normal force is acting. Well, is this object going to topple? No. What if we put it on its side? Here's its center of mass. Here's its tiny little support base. In this case, no. I mean, I try to draw it straight up and down. No, we could balance it there. We're going to come back to this example in a second. But what if we have a wine glass Toppling? Toppling? Yes. yes, this one it will topple. See ya. There, there are uh, three kinds of stability. No, I guess I should say there are three values of stability. Things can be in stable equilibrium. If something, when I say equilibrium, if something is sitting still, it's in equilibrium. If all the forces, if the net force acting on it is zero, it's in equilibrium. And it can be in stable equilibrium. It can be in unstable equilibrium. And it can be in neutral equilibrium. These are, yeah, states of stability. You could call it that, yeah. Or states of equilibrium might be better. And the rule of thumb is if we, if we shift an object, if we translate an object geometrically, um, if the center of gravity or center of mass, they're the same for this, if the center of gravity or center of mass uh, has to move up, then that is in stable equilibrium. So, so our cube, for example, if I move this, if I try to rotate it about its center of gravity, which way is it going to go? Well, the center of mass will have to go up to be in this location if I rotate it. Oh, that, that is not how I wanted to draw that. So I'm, I'm going to rotate it about this little axis here. The center of mass has to move up to get there. And that means that if I put it there, and I let go while I'm in the process of rotating it, it'll fall back to where it was. That's stable equilibrium. Unstable equilibrium is any, any uh, change in position will cause its center of gravity to go down. That would be unstable equilibrium. And then neutral equilibrium, and, and it, it can have both. Like the wine glass will be stable to a point and then unstable. And the neutral equilibrium is where if, uh, like in the example, if I have a ball and I translate that, 
Now it's in the exact same location. It hasn't moved neither up nor down. That's neutral equilibrium. The example your book gives is, how come the guy with a funny hat on page 143, he's in stable equilibrium. He's a, it's a tightrope walking bicycle man. I don't know. I'm not going to draw his hat as good as the book has it, but that's what he's kind of looking like. There we go. Tightrope riding. Tightrope riding bicycle man with a funny hat. It normally, normally, without any apparatus, could you do this? Well, you might be able to, but what kind of equilibrium are you in? Unstable, yeah, because any rotation will cause your center of gravity to go down, and then it'll keep going, and you'll fall. But what he, what he has is this apparatus which has these weighted balls hanging off either side. So now the center of mass of this whole system is really somewhere down here. And so if he starts to rotate, the center of mass will have to rise up for him to fall all the way over, which would make it into stable equilibrium. So there's, and you've seen toys like this. They make little metal toys that are like on a pedestal. Um, well, actually, hold on. I have one. Pause. I'm going to bring it in. Oh, okay. Well, so here I have my bird object. I'm going to show you and the camera. Here's bird object, and it looks like it looks like if I try to balance it, it should fall. Like if I try to balance it by its tail, oh man, it, it is going to fall. I don't think I could even do it. Maybe I could get it balanced, but that's not even upside down. But but what it happens is this: these wings are weighted where the silver is, and so if I put it on my thumb. And I can just balance it. Ooh, because you can even see it moving. You can see its stability because every movement that it has, every tiny little movement, whoa, every tiny little movement uh, causes it, the center of mass has to move down. And that is stable equilibrium. So that's the point of this guy's big old balls on the end of his rod is that that makes it so that any movement, like if his bicycle, which is, oops, if his bicycle will tilt like it naturally will if he didn't have these, the center of mass has to move up instead of down. So he's in stable equilibrium. So it's really not as impressive. It's just science. It's not magic. It's not carny magic. Um, and then there's, uh, we'll talk about the Fosbury flop first, and then there's a pretty cool experiment that I want to do with it, and I want to see if I can get it on camera. Um, but the Fosbury flop is this thing where, like, for, the, for a long time in the high jump, in the ancient Greek days, and even, like, up to the 1800s, a person doing a high jump would just, like, jump high. Like, they try to get their feet up there, you know, oh, I'm going to jump high. But then it was because of the center of mass, and I don't think that this was not a discovery of this, but people realized that if they went backwards over it, your body can move over the bar while your center of mass is actually moving under it. So the center, if you t twist yourself enough backwards, the center of mass can move under the bar, which may means that really you only have to put in, since we consider these objects to be gravitationally located at the center of mass, you would need less potential energy to move your center of mass because it's really not going up that high. So if you can contort yourself over the bar, and as you said earlier, it's not called the Fosbury flop anymore. This is just the way it be. Now, everyone does it this way because you'd have to be crazy because this guy's center of mass has to get half a meter higher than this guy's. So everyone does it this way. It's just the way you do high jump now. Well, the rules don't say you should do it that way, but you'd be crazy not to. Um, because the point is, just like the cup or the chair, the center of mass of an object doesn't have to actually be contained in that object. And so the last thing here um, that we have is a demonstration, but we, it works, it only really works if you have a male and a female because there's a difference in the center of mass of human beings. Yeah, does he have female people in there? Um, yeah, let's, let's get one. Hold on, I'll pause this so we can. Okay, so because of the center of mass of males and females, we had a center of mass drawing here. Because the center of mass of males and females is different, this is a little demonstration that can be done. So if you're a male, Ty, you're a male. Come over here. Uh, what you do is you have to, actually, you know what? I'm also a male. You have to, you get yourself two of your own feet away from the wall, and then you put the chair here in front of you. Are you watching me? And then you put your head on the wall, and you lift up the chair, and if you were male, you cannot stand up. It just... It is not possible. <laughs> you can like break your neck trying to do it if you want, but it may be if you like. It's, it is hard, and my hair is already seeing the board. That's good. This is a hair erase mark. Um, Ty, you come try it. It's not just because I'm inadequate. It's because of center of mass. It's because of physics. Here's an, a spot where my hair has already erased the board, Ty, so you can do it there. It has to be two feet of your own away, otherwise you're going to cheat. There you go. Yep, there, and then chair in front of you. 
Then bonk your head. Lift up the chair. Now try to stand up. <laughs> All right, Josie. Josie, a female who we've recruited, also a seventh grader. You know the rules? Okay, bonk. Bonk. No, oh, hey, you have to bonk your head. There you go. She got combat boots on. There you go. Bonk. There you go. Chair. Lift the chair. Stand up. Oh. Oh, Josie's been lying to you guys. <laughs> oh, wait. Clap. Did you see her do it? Okay, you try, Sage. So is the center of mass of the male or female lower? And how can you tell? Ty, this is a question for you because you're in physics. Is the center of mass of the, of the male or the female lower? Oh! Ah! The center of mass of the female is lower. Because she has to, she's, when Cody does it, what's happening is that his center of mass up here somewhere can't be moved. Because oh, hey! Cody's been lying to you too. No, he, he stepped. He did a step. You want to try it? Is he, do you have any other girls want to try it? Bye, Ty. Do you want, does, a girl, does another girl want to try it? No, well, you'll have to have a sex change. Girl, come, come try it, girl. There are more chairs. Hey, oh, you have to take a step. You can't take a step. Come on, try it, Eliana. Try it, Eliana. Try it, Tommy. So two footsteps. Yep, there, there. Then back one more. There you go. Now bonk your head. Uh. Well, there we go. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to clap, but I also have this in my hand. Okay, Eliana, your turn. This will be the last one, and then it's time to go. Yep. Yep. Bonk. Now lift it, and then... Hey, look at that. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye.